let's get it started. So last session, we spent quite some time on that table. And that was a good exercise for us to understand what is the difference between a white box attack, a black box attack, and uh, you have two different black box attacks. One is that you have access to the network, or at least a copy of a network. And the other one is that you have a totally different architecture. And using them, you have to generate your adversarial examples, and then you can attack as an adversary. The next paper is interesting because it says that you can take the attacks to the extreme. You can actually change one pixel in an image and manage to fool a deep neural network. These are some examples. You have a ship, you change one pixel, and then it's going to turn into a car. That's a horse, it's going to turn into a frog, etc. So you can change a cat to a dog by changing only one pixel. So these are impressive results. But what is the math behind it? We said we have a target classifier. We have our original image, which is being correctly classified as class T. We denote f of t of x to be the probability of x belonging to class T. We are looking for additive adversarial perturbations. We have a target class, which we are calling it ADV, and we want to increase the probability of that target class by adding a small perturbation to our original image. We are interested in black box, so we don't have access to F. We can only evaluate it. And we are interested in L0, L0 norm, which is basically counting the number of pixels that are different. And in our case, because we want to take it to the extreme, we set D to be one. It means that you are only allowed to change one pixel. And then because we want it to be a black box attack, and because that uh, maximization problem is a very hard one, we don't have access to gradients. And even if we have access to gradients, this is not a nice objective function to maximize because of the constraint. So it's basically a count constraint. We're counting the number of pixels. So we are going to use differential evolution. And what is a differential evolution? I'm going to tell you next. But for now, it's an optimization algorithm for solving complex optimization problems. And in general, it belongs to the class of evolutionary algorithms. And we saw an example of an evolutionary algorithm in uh, when we were doing AutoML. That one was, a, was an aging evolutionary algorithm. This one is differential evolution. So what is the space? Where are we trying to search for a solution? So this is the space of candidate solutions. X1 and Y1 is going to give you the location of your pixel. For instance, the 10th location in the X direction and the 20th location in the Y direction is going to give you this pixel. And then we want to set the color. We want to set RGB, red, green, blue. But then you start with a population initially. Maybe you have 14, 400 uh, initial configuration or, or initial candidate solutions. In this case, we have D of them. D could be 400. And each one is going to be identified by the location of the pixel and red, green, blue. And initially, we are going to start things random. So we are going, we are going to do a random search. We are going to sample the location from a number to be a number from 1 to 32. And we select that at random according to the uniform distribution. If your data set is CIFAR 10, and if it is ImageNet, you're going to select those numbers from 1 to 227. So you pick two numbers at random from that range according to the normal distribution. And for red, green, blue, we are going to use, sorry, according to uniform distribution, for red, green, blue, we are going to choose the normal distribution. It's going to have a mean and it's going to have a variance. That's going to give us the initial population. And initially, these are going to be our parents. We have 400 of them. And we are going to create children that are the candidate solutions. So we are going to pick the best of them and then do some mutation to come up with the children. So how are we going to come up with the children? That's where the differential evolution comes in. You pick J, K, and L. So you pick three members of your parents from the previous generation. So G is, gener is denoting the generation. From the previous generation, you select three points, I, J, and K. And to go to the next point in the next generation, 
and basically do your mutation. You take xj and you add the difference of k minus l, and that's going to give you a new point, xi. That's going to be a member of your candidate solution. That's going to be a child. So xi is an element of the candidate solution now. So from your parents, that's how you obtain your children. And as I said, g is denoting the current index of the generation. And we are going to do 100, 100 iterations. So g is going to be your iteration. You're going to have a for loop on g. And then you keep selecting three random numbers or three random elements of your parents to obtain the next uh, candidate solution in the next generation. And that's why it's called differential, because there's a difference here. And lambda, this paper is choosing it to be 0 0.5. That's just a scale parameter. And how are you going to find the best ones? Because remember, evolutionary algorithms is a combination of uh, random uh, search and selection. So we have to select among them. What is the criteria to select the best candidates? You look at the fitness function, and the fitness function is coming from the probability that the label of the target class, which in our case is f of adv, and we want to maximize that. If that's a targeted attack, if it's untargeted, you just want to minimize f of t, f of the true class. So for c part 10, we are going to have a targeted attack. And then we are going to increase the probability of the target. For ImageNet, we are going to do an untargeted attack. So we are going to minimize the probability of the true class. So that's exactly what I mentioned there for CIFAR 10. If your fitness function takes a value of bigger than 90%, uh, you're going to stop. And that's going to be a targeted attack because you're maximizing the probability of the target. And for fitness function, you're minimizing. So whenever you are minimizing, you want to have a threshold. If you're below that threshold, you're going to stop the optimization. And that's a non-targeted attack. And we are going to do it for 100 iterations. Any questions? I have sort of a little question uh, just about this, this normal distribution they're using for the red, green, and blue. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if they're parameterizing by a standard deviation or a um, variance, but that seems like a, just a very, very strange Gaussian um, because it's so flat uh, with such a high variance. Um, and why not just do like another uniform distribution or something? Uh, I guess you could, but uh, that's why taking a look at the data matters. If you do some exploratory data analysis, then you might come up with the correct uh, distribution or at least a uh, a good approximation to the true distribution. Okay. Because, uh, yeah, I guess then you can take a look at the mean and the variance of the pixels in your data set, and you can use that to better inform your initial prior. But uh, this is already going, it's already doing good enough. Any other question? So there is a question from Kevin. Isn't that Gaussian also take on values outside of the domain of a red, green, blue pixel? Yes, so there is a chance that it might take a value below um, one and above 256. So that would happen, so you can have a truncated normal. So you can truncate it. Does that answer your question, Kevin? No, it's not truly normal and it doesn't really matter because all you need to have is some random initial guess. And then things are going to change according to our mutation here. And there is also a chance that when you do this uh, difference, there is a chance that your values are not going to end up being integers, especially x and y. But then you can also truncate them. You can make them an integer. Take either the floor or the ceiling and turn that into an integer. So does that answer all your questions? Are there any more questions? The idea is that that's a complicated optimization problem and there was no other choice other than evolutionary algorithms. You don't have access to the function, you don't have access to the gradients, etc. And that's a black box attack. And you're only allowed to change one pixel or a couple of pixels, one, two or three or more. So let's see some results. You can change a pixel and turn a cop to a soup towel. You can have a bassinet, make it a paper towel, etc. by changing one pixel here and there. Uh, and on CIFAR 10, your original accuracy for 
four types of networks, all convolution networking network, VGG, BVLC, I don't know what that is. These are your original accuracy and uh, you can have targeted attack. It's gonna reduce the accuracy. You can have non-targeted attack. It's gonna reduce the accuracy also. And this is how confident your attack is. And your confidence are gonna come from here. It's gonna say, how confident are you that this is the true foul? And the more, the higher these values, the better is your attack. And just to clarify that non-targeted attack is the black box attack, correct? No. So there is a difference between uh, targeted, non-targeted, white box, and black box, black box attack. For targeted, you say that, yes, I know that the classifier is classifying this image as a ship, but I have a target. I want the classifier to classify this as a car. So that's your target. The car is your target. For instance, here, frog is your target. You specify a target and force the algorithm to classify that image as a frog. And how do you do that? You increase the probability of that image being classified as a frog. So that's what this ADV means. Okay, yeah, thank you. Non-target, it means you don't have any target. You just want the classifier to classify this something other than the horse. So any class other than the horse, if you manage to fool your network in that way, then you're gonna be happy. It doesn't have to be a frog. What does it mean? Then you have to minimize the probability of this image being a horse. Once you minimize that, then it's gonna make a mistake. By black box, I mean, you don't have access to the network structure. Yeah, I, un I understand now, thank you. Yeah, any other question? And uh, the other observation is definitely, if you increase the number of pixels that you're allowed to change, you're gonna have a more effective uh, attack. And these are the success rate for targeted and non targeted. And uh, that's a dog. And you can have targets to be all the other nine cases, and you're going to be successful by changing only one pixel. You're going to take a dog to be classified as an airplane, a cat, or a horse, etc. Any questions about robustness in general? Because I'm going to change topic. Well, for this particular slide, I was wondering how increasing the resolution of the, or the image to be classified could decrease the effectiveness of this attack? That's a very good question. And the paper actually studies that. Uh, there is a difference between CFART and an ImageNet. On ImageNet, changing one pixel is probably not as effective as changing one pixel in CFART. That makes sense. Because you have more pixels. This one is 32 times times 32, this one is 227 times 227. Oh yeah, that's a great question, and you're right. And in the paper, they actually show that. It's less effective, but still it's impressive that by changing one pixel, you can fool a network. Yeah, okay, thanks. Yeah, any other questions?